fresh wonder. Like many sharks, stingrays give birth to live young. When they emerged, these babies had what looked like a small cap on their stings, presumably to prevent internal injury to the mother. However, these safety catches soon drop off. Within minutes, these twins are armed and ready to defend themselves. It has been known before for these fish to be checked up in the courts, and if they are not going to hurt, there's a worry that they're not going to survive. The great thing about these fish here, these two, is that they are you know, pretty well fully developed. They might be being born a little bit early, but they are definitely going to survive in this room, particularly with that two inch form on their tail. There's not a lot that's going to come near them. The scientists return to what I can only describe as the mothership. No one really knows why this animal grows so huge. Could size, I wonder, be the key that allows a marine fish to invade rivers? Most sea fish die quickly in fresh water. It's the larger ones that are best able to cope with stress and survive. There's one final song to extract. <laughs> Collecting this thick, toxic mucus will help the scientists to discover in more detail how the venom works. It's time for me to bid farewell to this river monster. Though the jury's still out, if further research confirms that this fish does live exclusively in fresh water, then it probably is the biggest freshwater fish on the planet. What's certain is that this is the biggest and strangest to catch in my life. Reunited with her babies, the mother stingray is set free, and she returns to the dark depths of her hidden world. Well, there she goes. I think she's probably going to go back to all her friends with all the stories. Alien abduction, you know, they did experiments on the animals.